Sefa vs. Gunner's Mate, Tales of Heroes, number 30, on Samoa. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome to Tales of Heroes 30 here. This is Sefa versus Gunner's Mate. We are on Samoa. The last time we had Sefa on Samoa was a great game. I think it was Sefa versus Ahemian way back in one of the first ten shows, if I can remember correctly. And uh, this is going to be Sefa as an Axis player on Samoa. So let's see how this game goes down. I am Bridger for Tales of Heroes. Also joining me is my reputable co-host, Vittensby. Welcome to the program. Great to be here, as usual. I think that's my typical way of entering the show. Just point of clarification. Two points of clarification about the strategy of the week. I just talked to uh, Anaketos, who's kind of developed this strategy. I don't think anyone else really has done it. Um, he said when they go tier 2 to 4, um, basically it's a good idea to get Pershings, because that completely owns everything that they can throw at you. Um, that was just one clarification. The other clarification was about the little, <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it, argument that we had. But uh, my only point was is I just hate it when people go on the forums and say that uh, there's a definitive way that someone could have won the game. Like if they definitely would have got a sniper or if they got, you know, grenades, then they definitely would have won the game. I mean, I don't, I just don't like theory crafting like that using, you know, an uh you know, a word like, you know, definitely, if he would have got this, he would have won the game. I just don't like it when that, but everything we do here, I think, is speculation in our opinions, and I don't think we definitively say that uh, anything could have won the game in particular. Vinsby, um, I think you're wrong. I think if, if, if Sefa had simply built an extra pioneer at the beginning here, uh, you know, then he would have won the game. I agree. Definitely. Uh, five, five I actually to have ten no idea who wins. Start. So, <laughs> yeah, I ten no, pioneers no start. All right, okay. so we're, we're at the five second mark here. I'm watching uh, the Axis player, which is Sefa under the I Am Joel account. We have Gunner's Mate playing as the Allies on the north of Samoa with uh, with Sefa on the south. So let us, without further ado, get this party started, shall we? We're at the five second mark. Starting the replay in five, four, three, two. One, unpause. There we go. So let us follow and see what we get first. Oh, hey, look, a Wehrmacht quarter. That's a surprise. Wait. No, it's not. What do we got over here? Looks like a barracks opening for the, uh, the allied player Gunner's Mate. And we'll see where they go because there's a lot of different things you could do on an opening on Samoa. Do you want to go straight for the middle and try and capture one of those buildings to, you know, keep the enemy out that way? Or do you want to flank around? Do you want to do the Samoa pin? Lots of different things that you could do. So here is the telltale sign. Almost always you see pioneers go straight for that fuel, or engineers go straight for that fuel. And uh, that is the case again here. Fast building the Wehrmacht. And uh, looks like we got some riflemen or a jeep building at the barracks as well. And we have only the, the two pioneers start and the two engineers start. Fairly comparable openings right now. We'll see how things go. My guess is Sefa is getting a Volk squad first. I'm not sure if he's going to send those pioneers over to wire off the uh, point from the fuel and the munitions where Axis uh, or the player in the north tends to cross. It looks like that's what he's going to be doing. He tends to lag in game these days. Sefa, fix your connection issues because seriously, I see this lag thing come up every time I watch one of your replays, and I know it's you. <laughs> I play with you a couple times, especially in team games. It gets kind of bad at some point. But uh, it does look like the Alley player is going to be doing a classic Samoa pin. I wouldn't be surprised if he player wires. Too. Uh, actually, he's not wiring. A common thing to do is wire in three points now. I think uh, not too many people do that. Uh, they wire the little river crossing on the left as well as the fence and the bridge. But it doesn't look like he's going for that. He's going for a quick munitions cap, uh, which in the long run might not work out to his advantage. I just did this same thing today. MG first threw it in the church and got all shot up to hell. And uh, that's probably what's going to happen to Sefa because you'll notice that uh, they're at the, the blind spot. In the blind of the church, spot. Yeah. 
I made the same mistake and it, was, it ended up costing me the game this yeah. morning. It doesn't look like it because it looks like you should be able to fire out of any of those. Oh wow, lost it. Should be able to fire out of any of those side windows, but in, if, if, in actuality, it's only this one on the far left, and uh, of course the the main ones on on the two front. But you know that's the limitation of the church here. So he lost his first MG. That's going to be a big big problem for Sefa. We're going to have to see how he comes back from that. But he did. Uh, why, why does this look like my game that I just played this morning? Dear God, the guy did not wire off the bridge. He killed my first MG in the church. I was screaming, and uh, and I stuck my pioneers right in that building. Uh, wired off the top. If you were that guy, congratulations. You caught me after being sick for two weeks, and I'm uh, sorry to run. Uh, uh, yeah. Rifle this spam is, a... is greater than Volk's Grenadiers. <laughs> right yes. here. This is a really tough position for Axis to be in because he's pretty much pinned in his base at this point. Um, he can't. Setting up an MG on the bridge is only so good. Um, if he gets a suppression in, uh, if Gunner's made is smart, he'll just move back rather than hit the retreat button. I'm pretty sure Sefa will probably just be setting that up on the bridge right now, and uh, we'll see how that takes him. But uh, what the guy did against me this morning was you just go around the hedge and uh, stick a rifleman squad there and get grenades, and that's pretty much, uh, you can't really move up. Uh, from that, and uh, he had me pretty screwed in my base. Uh, maybe I should have got a sniper or something, but we'll see what Sefa does to pull out of this precarious situation. Uh, this is pretty risky. It seems like the Pioneers were a good diversion, um, and uh, he does have a little bit of a better MG positioning. I think Gunner's Mate should be definitely getting grenades at this point, but he continues to rifle spam. Um, he already has the advantage, just getting grenades would pretty much solidify it, in my opinion. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. All right, so we now have uh, the Allied player with three rifle squads and two engineers on the field. And the Axis player has one mostly destroyed Volks, a new fresh Volks, and a machine gun. He's also in the middle in a position to do some damage here with that, uh, with that Volks and MG. He's wired off. That's an interesting position to wire off. To prevent a flanking of that machine gun, I think, is the main idea here. And right. now he's going to meet up uh, with the allies in the church. And he's going to have his machine gun position to be able to fire directly at the church, doing a lot of damage. Because surprisingly, that church doesn't seem to give you much cover overall. I've seen units in that church die really quickly. Yeah, I, he's getting the BAR upgrade right now. I really think that's a mistake. Um... Definitely on an urban map like Samoa, I think grenades first are better, but some of my uh, some of my friends prefer to go um, BARs first. And uh, I don't know, I think grenades at this point would have been a, a lot better investment, especially floating right now 100 munitions. Um, this is That was a good move right there, and now he's got the bars. I think this might be what I'm waiting for, but these Volks were really tearing up those riflemen at long range because the Volks had heavy cover as well. Now he's got his uh, machine gun in position here too. And meanwhile, he's had his his um, his pioneers going all around the uh, the outside, decapping the fuel and the, and the munitions at the top there. Uh, we've also lost the fuel on the Axis side as well. Uh, Gunner's mate managed to get in there with one of his excess rifle squads, but I believe that cost him the middle of the map here because he got his excess rifle squad um, in way back in, in trying to take down that fuel. He did not have it in the middle to try and help flank with that MG. So that was uh, a big problem for him right there. You know, that was a big risk moving that out, but I think he didn't expect to see Sefa come back so soon with just a rifle, I'm sorry, just the Volks and an MG. I agree. I think uh, Gutters may have made a crucial error by not keeping the pressure on, getting early grenades, um, trying to harass the MGs, and using the uh, early munitions advantage to his advantage. Instead, he decided to get quick... Uh, Quick bars. I think that's that's definitely um, a mistake at this point. Um, but we'll again, you know, we'll we'll see how this plays out. There was a little bit of harassment going on uh, behind the lines for each player. We do have a quick observation post going up. Um, maybe we'll see a fast quad. That's pretty standard these days. Uh, this is a situation I'd love to have grenades in. Yeah. One grenade into that building and that MG would pretty much been toast. But I don't know why he chose to go into that building either. I mean, it's got a blind spot in what could be the worst possible place when you're fighting guys over there. 
Yeah, I'm not not sure. I'm, I'm still not sure why he decided to get bars first. I mean, I guess he was just thinking, well, he's going to probably try to get Volks to make up for the lost squad, because, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a bar first kind of guy, especially that early on. It seemed like he had maybe three squads. This is a situation again where, you know, uh, grenades. Grenades, grenades, grenades. But, uh, Cephas seems to have maybe overextended his his line here with uh, what he's trying to do, which is cut off the cut off gunners made from basically the center of the map. Suppression fire, owning the hell out of this machine gun in the back. Yep. Also owning the owning the rifle squad there. We have a weapon support center out now, and uh, it's interesting. He, he built he built an observation post on the field, and then he gets weapon support center rather than a fast quad. I don't know, I'll have to think about that one. It's a popular strategy, I think, to go uh, these days, especially expecting Blitz Comcraft Center, an early sniper if used effectively. I've seen in a lot of replays, including including some of the games I've played. I mean, snipers just get miraculous amounts of, of kills, you know, in excess of 10 or, or, or 12, maybe even 15. Sometimes I think this one replay I had, I called it the counting game. I killed 18 of his guys with my Axis sniper, then he returned the favor with the crocodile, pretty much in 30 seconds. But uh, snipers are, are pretty powerful and popular in 1.5 because um, of the Bliss Comcraft Center strategy. Oh, this can't be good. Not going up against Bar Volks, or, sorry, Bard Rifleman at long range with uh, just being out in the open. That was that was a losing game right there. He's got an MG now. He could have just waited for that. And um, I don't know, maybe we'll see a quick tank Devo. Um, definitely getting weapon support center, and then immediately right afterwards, the supply yard and not getting grenades. Uh, I'd predict maybe a, a tank Devo coming out sometime soon. We've got a uh, big problem here for Sefa. He's got now lost that fuel again, and uh, placing a mine. That's a good place for a mine right there. Because you know he's going to want to bring two mines. There you go. He's got going to want to bring something through there if uh, he wants to flank later in the game. So that's a great thing to do when he's, you know, not being harassed in that northern section with that one pioneer. That's going to probably help him a lot in the late game if he manages to push back here. What's uh, Sefa's munitions right now? 61 and only 39 fuel because he lost that fuel so often. He might be in tier two, but I didn't I didn't notice if he'd gone up yet. Ouch. Yeah, he's got nothing on the field. I mean, he's got two Volk squads. I mean, two MGs. Ouch. Um, this is definitely risky, though. I mean, leaving that sniper is just gonna. Yeah. I mean, I completely un unsupported. And we do have a tank depot, uh, which is what kind of I was expecting. I don't really see him wanting to get a motor pool at this point, but uh, retreating that sniper is definitely a, <laughs> definitely a, a not that not that great at this point, uh, especially because he doesn't have grenades. Uh, and he just showed show. the enemy that he has a sniper. Right. Uh, that's the second aspect of that. But he, Sefa did get sniped, so he knows it's there, but um, certainly Rifleman oh, with Rifleman with bars, it's just... Uh, the Volks can't get in close enough. Bikes get pretty much instantly chewed up. Um, so keeping a sniper like in a situation like this um, definitely would have completely owned just about the MG, the MG and just about anything that he could thrown at him. Just a little bit of suppression. Uh, moving into the church, we do have the first stormtrooper squad on the field. We've got a horde of engineers and riflemen leaving the base, along with the sniper. Let's nice flank uh, going guns. on with the rifleman. And the MG isn't firing just yet. I need to stop. We do have Panzer Shrek in the church. Flamer engineers. Two flamer engineers. This is going to be bad. Bad news for that church. They got to get them out of there right now. Yeah, and Gunner's mate uh, just lost a squad of riflemen. Looks like he's probably going to. He lost yeah, it back uh, from the machine gun? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. No, it was the Volks that killed it on the way. It was retreating, ah. and here comes. Oh man, sniper. look at the range Again. of that flamer! 
again, Gunner's Mate, uh, with that sniper, it's just it's not being backed up by anything, unfortunately. There's no rifleman there to hit the suppression button um, to stop the infantry from coming up. Uh, we do have a bundled nade, so Sep is in tier Ooh. three. Good usage of a bundled nade, really flush those uh, guys out. That was quick reaction, too, by Gunner's Mate to get him out of there. Yep. Uh, we have four command points and no uh, no company chosen yet. Uh, I see we have Blitz. How many command points is Sefa in at this point? Uh, he's got infantry assault team, and he's also got one extra command point. So All right, he's so still... he's still two away from the stuff. Yeah. wonder what he's going to do with that tank depot. He's almost got enough. He, he did go armor company. Uh, he just chose it right now. 13 minutes in. Oh, we got a tier uh, 3 here, Sturm Armory up. Puma. Yeah, this is... ouch. Oh, I didn't even see the Puma come by. Yeah, sepha has been mixing in. This is, you know, kind of more or less a classic 1.4 build um, with, you know, tier tier uh, 1 to 3 with Blitz kind of breaking the gap in case Motorpool comes out with a quick squad of, squad of Stormtroopers. Oh, jeez, um, running over that poor American. No respect for the dead, you crazy puma. We have a M M10 out right now, which ah, is yep. an interesting choice. I don't know if that's necessarily the best. I think uh, he did have enough fuel for Sherman, and uh, M10s just really don't do it against infantry. But, but it's going uh, it to help him against that speed. puma. Yeah, it definitely has the speed to catch up with the puma and take it down. And wow, just one hit. Did you see that? Yeah, that's a Rear lot of damage. Hit. Pretty much uh, instantly killed it. One more, yeah, it's gone. Wow, good. Definitely, I guess uh, that was a good counter uh, for the Puma. Not so much for the other infantry on the field. Well, yeah, but, but he's uh, got bars with suppression. Why does he need to counter infantry with a tank? <laughs> At this point. Well, it's just it re reinforces that. Now he's got a shirt. Uh, no, another M10. I just think, I mean, he he kind of knows. Listen, listen, he's coming. just gonna start crushing stuff, okay? It's it's he's all right. Loser, it's he's as simple as stuff. that. <laughs> just gonna run over. It's not as easy as you think. I know, but, I know. Uh, but uh, just a couple of guys have been flying around this map this entire battle here, capturing everything for Sepha. So he's definitely been doing a good job with that. Now he's got uh, pioneers in that building. I presume that is to prevent the sniper from one-shotting that machine gun. Just keeping yep. it alive a little bit longer. And there's uh, the Cloak Storm Squad sneaking up by the plus yeah. five munitions. And this is why you don't want M10s against Storm Tr No, okay. Um, Sniper got the Storm that you were talking yeah. about that earlier. Storm is now already nice down to three. One more shot from that and it's in big trouble. Yep. Uh, two M10s. I can't believe this. Why? You had the fuel for Sherman. And the munitions for the gunner on it, but, uh, oh well. I guess, like you said, he saw Tier 3 and he's like, I think maybe he just wanted to place. counter it as fast as possible before his opponent can completely solidify his position here. Oh, yeah, I can understand one of them, but two? I don't know. This is hard. I mean, Sepha just took back map control, but now he's completely forced off the map. This is, it's interesting. This game's gone back and forth uh, just in the, in the first few minutes. Uh, as far as map control, as far as being pushed on and off the field, um, good repair uh, usage, usage by uh, Gunners made for sure. Keeping those M10s the alive is be sneaking crucial. by. Here it is. I think he's setting up for that. Just uh, when that comes out, it's pretty much going to be instantly killed. Shermans have a little bit of a harder time against the Sta, so maybe you're right. Maybe he's going to use the what two squads of Rifleman or three squads he has left to uh, to take care of that. Wow, he lost it. He he actually lost a full squad of that stormtroopers. I thought he got both of them out of there, but I guess he lost it completely because I only see one now. Yeah, without a comcraft center up, which is kind of the, the trade off, I would say. God, this game looks exactly like the game I played this morning. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Just everything, like the way that it progressed, map control. Why, anyways. But, uh, We're yeah. almost to a star, and that could certainly help, but, uh, I don't know if it's going to be able to take out all these M10s. Here comes the first Stug onto the field. Stug. Uh, Stug, yeah. Almost enough command points here. 
Uh, definitely got that M10 out of there real quick. That's in big trouble if he doesn't move it. Oh, he's dead. No way. He can't get it out of there before the Shrek gets off. Unless the Shrek doesn't fire for 10 I seconds. I think you would have had time, but oh well. Wow, yeah. but he lost a lot of health on that stock. Holy crap. Well, you Snipers can take firing away for here. That. There goes a bundle grenade oh, inside. Oh, he got everything out except... Oh, oh not quite. Even wow. I will scream when I see something like that. That was a nice <laughs> nade. He just just asking for it, putting his sniper and everything else in that building. Oh my god. Yep. Wow. That's that's a turn of events that's uh, quite fortuitous for Sefa. Uh, that was definitely a Meanwhile, well timed bundle grenade. Sefa's been uh, retaking the uh, the victory point down here in the south. With these just roaming Volk squad, which uh, Gunner's Mate hasn't been able to counter yet. Let's see. Yeah, the VPs are very, very even so yeah. far. We do have a Vista uh, coming out. Hopefully, he can kill that Stug. That uh, ping off the front armor. That's oh, he's gonna one get one more shot. More shot. There it is. It? Yeah, and he did it. Now it has level 2 veterancy, so keeping that alive is going to be pretty crucial. He's got to retreat Another that bundle, but he's got the bundle. bundle. Oh, good night, Susan. That's a big one. And people say the pineapple grenade is overpowered. <laughs> oh, it is. Don't worry about it. That's, that's still true. <laughs> here we go. Stuff firing into uh, the, the church here. The church. It's, it's not even doing any damage to it. Interesting. I think it hit the ground there. That's one. Yeah, it's hitting the ground. I don't know if Sef is going to be able that's to counter really this uh, this purging that's going to roll out in hmm, about another minute up to this point. I'm pretty sure that's what he's saving up for. Um, that just, you know, I think the purging got kind of a buff as far as um, penetration modifier against Stugs, but I don't know if it's the same for the for the Stu. And I'd be curious to know if that there was some kind of reason for that, because I noticed that the Persian just absolutely annihilates Stugs, but it seems like it didn't. They didn't change the modifier against the Stu, um, as far as I can. Ouch. As far as I can see, maybe that, that's just me. That heroic Volk squad that's been owning the right side of the map this whole time has finally met its match, and the in in and the name is Suppression Fire. <laughs> uh, he needs to get some pioneers up here and uh, try and reclaim some of these. Rex to give himself some extra ammo, because that can be really beneficial in the middle of a game. Get some extra Shreks, get some extra anything, mines, whatever. But he's missing the critical component here is some pioneers. Number one, to repair his tanks when he needs it, but also to place down mines, because you know tanks are going to be coming. Putting some mines down in the middle right now would be very, very good for him. And here comes that Pershing, and he has about 450 munitions right now, so... I don't know, with two crew repair vehicles... Don't uh, worry, it's okay. The stud is taking out the entire graveyard. He's no respect for the French dead, so... That makes... <laughs> he's gonna get veterancy for destroying the tombstones? I don't know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. No, yeah, just keep taking out the whole wall. It's no problem. We didn't... We just... We don't need to... We'll rebuild it. It'll only take another ten years. We know, can rebuild it. recover from the war. Actually, my grandma was telling me when she went to... Europe, kind of, even 10, 15 years later, you could steal, still find, like, shrapnel and, and uh, old, you know, shells that didn't explode and stuff. It took, takes a long time to clean up from wars. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was just a little friendly side note. And here All comes right, the here Pershing and the M10. That does backing the hell out of there. He, he could really use, like, an AT gun or something. If only he could capture an allied AT gun, but there's none to, bo none to be captured. At this point, right. Well, this is where Gunner's Mate can really. We're still um, we're still about three quarters of a point away from a tiger. That's pretty standard because the Persian comes at seven CPs, uh, and it just you can just see that uh, the stormtroopers are in a Got really stuck. bad position. Yeah, half the squads on one side, half's on the other. That's not good. I have no idea how stuff I can recover and, and take the win at this point. I'm not gonna make any speculation because we still about halfway 
uh, from this replay being over, but man, he's in a really bad situation. Losing your first MG, it takes a real special kind of player to come back from that, especially since he didn't even kill a single guy with it. Um, he's been playing on and down a squad the entire time, and it's amazing the amount of map control he had up until this point. Oh. But uh, we do have Comcraft Center. Is he upgrading veterancy on what? Tanks? Is my guess. Or is it infantry veterancy? Uh, infantry level 1 veterancy. What I don't understand, right. and I've never figured this out, a unit crouching behind uh, a stone wall gets suppressed, and the guys crawl That's out nice. of cover. What? <laughs> What the hell? Nice. Seriously. That was ridiculous. I mean, I've seen that happen over and over again, but it's just so stupid because suppression is supposed to be, I can't fire because there's so much incoming fire, all I'm going to do is hide by crawling out into the open? I don't know. That just that just really bugs me because, yeah, okay. Because that's just what and happened is we had suppression fire, AI. Volks behind the, the cover thing, and then they just walked out into the, got killed easily when they got hit by the suppression fire button. Suppression fire w button wouldn't be nearly so destructive if when your units are in cover, they don't leave cover when they're suppressed. Well, this is just brutal. I mean, we have a uh, <clears throat> rifle squad with two levels of veterancy on it with a panzer strike. Um, if those have sticky bombs, I mean, this is just really bad for any Axis armor that's going to come out on the field, especially with the amount of munitions that he oh, has. Oh man, oh man! Uncloaked, instantly, pretty much instantly gone M10. This is, this is, oh my god, can you believe that mine just gave the Pershing a damage engine? Oh, it gave the, the Pershing stug. and the Stug, I just saw that. Yeah, uh, oh god. Oh, but look at those storms are suppressed, pinned, retreating, oh man, double veterancy now on the Pershing. <laughs> yeah. On a lighter note, gone on a lighter note, the the pioneers managed to prevail over uh, riflemen. Heavy assault forces are yeah. down in the south there. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely looks like it's over, but we are now have a tiger ready to come out here. How Only, much manpower? I don't know how the have? hell. I guess that M10 gave him a lot of freaking thing. He's at 800 manpower. And uh, I guess that M10 gave him a lot of resources. Or killing the... Oh, you know what it was? It was killing that barred rifleman squad down in the south, too, at the same time. He got lots of uh, XP for that, so now he's ready to bring out a Tiger uh, in about 50 more manpower. And that Pershing is about the only thing he's got now to fight against the Tiger. So I think a Tiger with a bunch of Shreks backing it up is going to be a lot more effective than a Pershing with a bunch of bars. Yeah, Unless in one minute stickies. we'll... In one minute we'll have another... Pershing on the field. Ah, well then. I think the the crucial point in this upcoming battle is going to be the fact that the Pershing has a uh, has a damaged engine, and it really uh, can't. Yep. He couldn't really get it out of there, or at least he's not repair? trying to at this point. Ouch! Yeah. Lots of red. Yeah, those manpower losses are pretty pretty brutal from that last battle. Um, Gunner's Mate's infantry is pretty much completely depleted. All of his capping power is. I would say completely gone. Now, what killed point. all the infantry in the last battle? Was it the Stu? This the Stu, and just, it's, yeah, just pretty much the Stu. Ouch! That machine gun just got blown to pieces. Yep. And he's and still flanking with that one flamer squad. Let's see if it can be the hero of the hour or if it dies right away. Managed to chase a bunch of those riflemen right out of the cover they were in. The one guy left. Come on, one more good burst, guy. Get the entire squad. <laughs> wow, he chased him away! I can't believe it! They're just gonna try an engagement long range. Much, much smarter. <laughs> Tiger Pershing versus, versus Pershing. Pretty yeah, close. level two veterancy. Here comes the stormtroopers. Yeah. What do we have there? Three, four Shreks? What is that? Three Shreks? Probably three Shreks. No, four, four Shreks. Shreks. Holy crap. And one rifle squad with a Shrek that's running away, so that's gotta be bad. Wow. It's been an interesting game going back and forth quite a lot. Uh, he activated field repairs or crew repair vehicles. Uh, I guess he really I felt that. Go I ahead. think he tried. He was trying to get the engine back. Maybe he has nothing else to do. Well, he what he's doing is he's waiting for that second Persian yeah. to come on the field. Then he's going to blow that tiger to pieces and activate field repairs if if necessary. But uh, with all those Shreks that stuff has, I mean, wow, it's it's going to be tough. Especially because the Pershings are kind of spread out at this point. Um, and but. you notice Sefa did a crazy cool thing here. He's stuck his pioneers way over in the corner to try and hide them 
from uh, the rifles that they were fighting before. I still don't know how the hell that Flaming Pioneer squad survived, but he's now uh, ready to go back and retake that victory point. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Flanking Pershing. Well, right on the ass of the Tiger, squads. but there's two Storm Squads. Two Storm Squads. Opening up on its ass. Yeah, this is going to be the crucial battle. Sticky bombs need to be going off now. That Tiger's uh, going to... Suppression, please. In. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He turned it around. Why did he turn it around? He got it out of there. Wow. Impressive. And we've got a Sticky Bomb, I think, because that Tiger's got... Uh, Damaged, damaged engine, engine now. It's interesting, rather than using field repairs during this battle, which is obviously a crucial battle, uh, Gunner's Mate just chooses not to. And, That's really uh, weird. He just yeah, he had the munitions, but he just didn't use it? Oh, dear God. What happened uh, to the... The Pershing got toast. What happened to I the other Pershing? It ran over his mines that were placed there. Oh, yeah, it did! Uh, wow! I told you that was going to make a big difference. Oh man, that that holy crap! I cannot believe that. Yeah, he's even laughing about it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can you say GG? Yeah, that was total uh, luck right there, you know. Yeah, you Just know. Kidding. I'm gonna go whine about the forums that mines are completely overpowered because they can destroy a Persian that had two percent health. Flash. Yeah, I know. But uh, now, okay, click on there. There he goes. Whoa! And I was like, I ah, just reading my mind. The 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 pioneer down here in the south is going to do what he was going to what he was put there to do. He's going to take back those points, and that's just going to force Gunner's mate to take a you know one of his squads all the way over to that point he thought he had secured because there's not supposed to be anything over there. <laughs> Panzer Shrek to Rifleman is ridiculous. This is what we were missing a lot of this game is suppression fire from Rifleman. I think Gunner's mate just lack in this particular game. I've seen some of his other replays and he just didn't seem quite as coordinated uh, at times as Sefa was. You know, just take the sniper for example, was unsupported um, many times and Ouch. you know, putting all those units in the church and then that bundled nade just was brutal and also with the with the Pershings, his decision not to use the field repairs has definitely been Hampering his, his efforts, um, but more so not. I don't know that it would have saved him though, because certain it, places it might have been able times. to kill the tiger. I don't know if that would have saved him. I think it would have killed the tiger, but probably wouldn't have saved his Pershings, because it doesn't repair it, a whole lot in retrospect, especially not on a Pershing. It does. It won't prevent you know massive burst damage, but it's in a situation like like that, um, a quick you know move in, activate fuel repairs, and then. You know, hit hit real hard with the tiger uh, at once, I th and then you know if the stormtroopers showed up, get your tiger, uh, your your uh, Pershing out of there, and then bring it back in when the repairs, you know, bring it up a little bit more. I really think that that was, uh, I think not using that is was pretty much game game changing. Uh, now he has allied war machine. Well, of course it was game changing, but um, I really think that that was that was a crucial mistake. And I think some other things that we've seen is he's keeping his stormtroopers all together so they all get suppressed when suppression fire comes on. Like, for example, they all they came out here and they got instantly suppressed. If he had just, you know, took a, taken a little time to micro them, he probably could have forced that rifle squad to completely retreat. I think he thought he was going to be able to retreat anyway. Manpower blitz is available without, the, without resources for it. <laughs> yeah, oh, the we're at pop cap. He can po call in another tiger the instant that he needs one. But we're at pop cap. I see. Yeah, pop cap's really harsh. <laughs> it's become Again, my biggest enemy. There you go. Keeping his storm good. squads too close together got them both suppressed. It's good use of suppression. Fire. Uh, didn't quite use it as well as he could have because, well, he didn't pin either of the squads. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking grenades earlier on. Um, you know, definitely in certain situations like that. A nice, well-placed grenade could have helped out, uh, considering Sefa doesn't have, as far as I saw last time, uh, level 2 what? He doesn't have level 2 veterancy on those infantry, right? Oh. No, uh, just nope, level just one. level 1. How come it said rear shot? Did that say rear shot? I think s side armor hits, for ah, the most part. It didn't look like it was uh, coming at times, side. can count as, as rear shots sometimes. There he goes. Finally, he's recapturing that south. That was so crucial because he's lost so many points. 
All because Sefa kept a, a 0.1% health Pioneer Squad hidden away in the corner. We, you know, he's been losing points this whole time, even though he recaptured the middle. This is interesting. He's choosing to get an M10 uh, right now rather than save up for a second Pershing. Um, we have double veterans M10s coming are, up on Tigers soon. Gunners, man, M10s are good when you're playing against Bridger, but against other players. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I had to say it. I'm but, uh, after, after the earlier comment. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so that's an interesting choice. I mean, I've M10s can pretty much circle a tiger nowadays and and take it out because they're so fast if they're microed properly. I've seen that in several replays. Um, but I, I know what he's hoping to do. He's hoping the Pershing will take the shots and then the M10 will flank from behind and it'll be real quick and easy. But M10s not with are just three so stormtroopers with Shrek. That exactly. M10's going to go down real quick. Right, and that's exactly what I was thinking, but not not when you have, you know, at this point in the game when you have so many Shreks, and he's walking right into the ambush right now. Unless he runs yeah. them all over! What the hell? <laughs> that never happens when I'm playing. <laughs> oh, but he's got Allied War Machine. Allied not War that it Machine. did him any good. <laughs> His M10 got one shot off. <laughs> and it's not it's dying! It's still alive, what the hell? It hasn't crashed into anything yet. <laughs> that is weird. There it is. <laughs> there we go. That was the that was the longest out of control I think I've ever seen. Me wow. too. I think it might have hit like a like a, a an engine damage or something. Forward, supply lines are broken. Something. That's something. Yeah, level two vet on tanks, dear God. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be GG. Two two tigers gets one Pershing. Oh, we do have the Allied, Allied War Machine. Machine is still going? I didn't think it lasted for this long still, but... Ah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it lasts, I think, for 50 seconds. It's pretty long. And we have another M10. Uh, that could have been another Pershing. Would have given him a better chance. I guess he's tired. But dear God, look at how many Shreks we have there. You, you looking at that? What is that? Eight, six Shreks? Minimum? Eight Shreks? How many Shreks? Stor talk about Stormtrooper spam. Oh, no, but he's keeping them all together, so they might just all get pinned. One of them got pinned. That M10 is going to take a lot of damage there. <laughs> Not I wonder why the he wisest didn't... direction to take the M10 in. Yeah, I wonder why he didn't attempt to run them over. Come on, here, here's your chance. They're all in a line. Go for it. Just do it. You see, if, uh, if, if he had just gone airborne, he could have strafed the whole thing, and then he would have won. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, clearly, you know. <laughs> clearly, the game would have changed no other way except that at this, in this uh, segment, he could have gone in airborne and, and straight into yeah. Triple veterancy on those, uh... Wow. Uh, That's a GG. Can I get a good night, Louise, please? <laughs> good night, Edgar. Edgar. <laughs> Uh, this, yeah, honestly, damn, great job indeed. Great comeback. Fantastic. The M10's gonna run over some more hedgerows, just, you know. If the Germans win, we're gonna leave them with, you know, something that we don't like, that it's not gonna be very pretty. Sefa was running low on VPs, but uh, now it's just turned around completely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm truly impressed <laughs> as well, uh... Ah, uh, where was the grenades when you need them? Damn it. I think that would have definitely made a big difference earlier in the game if he'd had those grenades instead of the bars. Oh, yeah. I can't see how the bars helped him a lot. I really don't see it either. Certainly not at the at the point that he got it. Uh, Sefa was really, I, I I don't know, felt like it was uphill for you. Oh, yeah, definitely it was uphill. And Sefa's about to lag Grace out at six seconds. <laughs> he kicks him at the end. God damn uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just waiting for the countdown to go down. Not the longest game we've had on here. It was certainly one of the more action packed and uh, com definitely a big comeback game. And certainly the game went back and forth quite a bit. Yeah, I know what he's talking about with Pop Cap. Get that problem all the time against just rifleman capping power and speed. It's, you know, 1.5 versus 1.0 makes a big difference, especially in the long run. 
Yep. Yeah. But uh, as long as we're crushing all the hedgerows in Samoa, let's do it again. Here you go. Don't worry. There it goes. Goodbye. This is the Germans you... and the Americans are going, <laughs> What are you hedgerow? What the heck's a hedgerow? Why don't you just make flat land like we have? That's ridiculous. Stupid Normans. <laughs> While you're at it, you don't need any buildings either. Let's just flatten all of those. I just wish that, that uh, I mean, knowing that Stormtroopers with Shreks pretty much instantly kill M10s. I would have I would have loved to see what if each one of That's those it. was Run. a Sherman. Run! Oh, knocks a tree over too. These Germans aren't very fun friendly to the environment. There goes another tree. Ouch. And I think it's a good out. good replay to know that M M tens have their their limitations, dear God. <laughs> Except his own minds. That's not quite as good as when Ahenian's own Stug killed his own Tiger Ace. Yeah, that's right. That was, the, that was probably the best Tales of Heroes moment ever. <laughs> Alright. This is probably basically GG. I think we're going to see a... Uh, uh, quit here in a second by Gunner's mate before he lags out, before somebody lags out. Oh my god, there it is. Any second now. Any second now. We could wrap Should it up. Should probably lose the, lose the purging. Alright, you know what, I'm gonna lose this. Oh my god, look at there we go, end game. So, let's talk about quickly, what do you think the Axis could have done? I think, um... Putting that MG in the church at the very beginning when he saw the rifleman coming up, I think that was a bad judgment call. Uh, you just have to know that when you have riflemen that close, he might not have been watching. He might have just told it to get in the church and was looking at something else at the time. But when riflemen are that close, you have to avoid trying to put them in a building. Just run an MG away or retreat it because there's nothing you can do if the, if the building has a, uh, a blind spot like that in the church. If you'd put it in the other building next to the church, then the riflemen would have, you know, had to have been suppressed or they had, would have had to not charge it. You know what I mean? They might have been able to do a circling maneuver though. So still, the, the, and the, the machine gun's in trouble. Yeah, I, I made the same mistake this morning, so... <laughs> I, as far as advice on that, I think if you get into that situation, don't sit your MG in there thinking, oh yeah, my Volk squad's going to come up and bail it out, because no, it, the riflemen kill it very quickly um, from that position. It's because they're so need, close, they just do much more damage. Right, and you just need to you just need to take it out immediately and retreat it. And, I mean, it's better to do that than lose it completely, um, and then you have to fight an uphill battle, which... You know, maybe you're you're not Cepha, so you can't really come back uh, like he was able to. But um, wow, well, yeah, that was definitely grenades, 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 grenades. That's what I'm thinking. With the amount of munitions he had from the beginning, and he should have used the uh, more of his powers with the Pershings. Yeah, and the field repairs. Yeah, I definitely didn't see. I did not see sticky bombs. Did you see a sticky bomb? I, mean, I didn't maybe see it was sticky just bomb. A, yeah, I really didn't see a sticky bomb. And then less M10s, more Shermans, especially when you... I think at the end of this game you had 500 fuel. It was quite a lot of fuel. Um, and considering the map control, I mean, Shermans are just a safer bet. Um, M10s, just, they're no match for Shreks at all. And uh, he didn't try to run over any infantry in this particular game. It's usually pretty risky, but it's it's they're just not worth it. I know he, he was, he's kind of worrying about the stu coming onto the field and M10s are definitely a good way of taking that out but against infantry Yeah, the no first way. one was a good choice I think. Killing the Puma real quick didn't have to wait until, you know, he had a, a enough fuel for a Sherman or what have you. I think that was a good call at the beginning. Maybe two wasn't that helped against the stug but I think anytime you go up against blitz or or you know the enemy's going to have a lot of panzer trucks in the field and M10 is very risky. Yep. And then also... Even I mean, with all mines, the buffs. I still think it shouldn't run over people, but that's just me. Right. Well, I think a, l a little bit of mines here and there, um, especially with the amount of time that Cepha was kind of on his side of the river, you know, back and forth, back and forth, map control. Uh, you know, sitting with 500 munitions for the entire game and not, e not doing... U really using it for much... Um, you know, especially when you don't have grenades, just, you know, lay down 100 munitions of, of mines or something. Uh, maybe even, you know, laying down a, bunk a bunker 
um, for not not a bunker. Hell, even an MG emplacement. I don't know. I kind of like that against uh, Blitz Comcraft Center on Bow Lowlands. It it has its it has its role at certain times. I've seen uh, JCB JCB do that um, against Aniketos. I did that against Underdark. Uh, we played our match on Bow Lowlands. Um, I, I like MG emplacements on that particular map, especially in, in 1.5 going up against that, but uh, it's really back, underused. Getting back to the, the machine gun first thing, I find that if you ever go machine gun first on like a map like Samoa or Sturzdorf or any urban type map like that, um, you almost always want one of your pioneer. You can't do an MG first with the Samoa pin. Because you have to, if you're going MG first, you have to explore that middle with your Pioneer before the machine gun gets there. Because otherwise you risk that same situation with the machine gun trying to, you know, get to a position to set up. Meanwhile, you know, it doesn't have any ability to see far enough to set up in advance. But if you have a Pioneer that's like a screen length ahead of your machine gun, you'll see the, uh, the, the, the rifleman. And you can set the machine gun up farther back and lure the rifleman right into the machine gun's fire or put it in a building where, you know, where you know it's going to be able to set up fast enough and, you know, use the pioneers to pull it in there and then you're good. But if you go engineer, uh, MG first, I think you almost always want to uh, use your pioneers as a scout in the very beginning to put that, you know, make sure that MG gets set up in the right place. Right. And additionally, I think MG first, whether it be weapon support center start or playing his axis, I think it works better from the north. Uh, just, there's, I mean, I just think it works better from the north. That building that's collapsed, I don't know if you still got the video up on it, but the building that collapsed right by the two tigers, that building right there is really easy to run that MG and just sit it there. Um, you know, and it'll protect your, your strap point, it'll allow, if you're doing the small pin, it'll allow you to basically free cap the entire right side of the map, and there really isn't a darn thing that allies or axis can do against it in the early game. Um, I just think it works just holistically better from the north. When you're doing it from the south, if you want to run an MG, maybe run it up into the upper left-hand corner uh, building and throw it there. But to run an MG through the center, it's pretty risky. You're almost always going to run into a rifle squad. So doing what Bridger said, which was you know putting the uh, Pioneer or engineer if you're doing weapon support center start ahead and trying to lure them into it or just scouting ahead so you know that you know where you can put it safely uh, that's that's the best business when you do mg first on, on this map i think just in general but All right. uh, that was a good game enjoy that one yeah absolutely so let us uh quickly mention we we're still going to try and do the bridger versus vittensby game but we're trying to find you know a decent one and we don't both have the same schedule so we don't get to play that much so we'll we'll see what we can do for that in the future uh in the meanwhile thank you guys for tuning in to tales of heroes number 30 uh for vittensby i am bridger Signing off here tonight, don't forget to check out insomnia365.com and typefrag.com for your game server hosting and ventrilo hosting, respectively. That is insomnia365.com and typefrag.com. So we are logging off here. Check out our audio sh show this week. We talked about uh, different topics we found on the forums, including uh, luck versus skill. The uh, potentially bugged ladder uh, auto match system, yes, even though we were so happy it got changed before now, it still has some things that need to be resolved, other news items this week, NVIDIA drivers that could help your performance, check out Tales of Heroes for that, and if you guys could do us a favor, send us all of your favorite moments from, t from, from Tales of Heroes, like so, you know, whatever, if you had a favorite moment, like... This is why the Calliope is overpowered. Send us the episode number and the time at which it occurs, or the episode number and a general description. Oh, it's, you know, when the, the V1s fall on that thing at the end of the game, you know, so that we'll be able to find it. And we're going to use that to create a montage, like, intro for the video and audio. So use the audio shows as well. If you have favorite moments in the audio shows, we highly appreciate that. Have favorite moments in the video shows, send us that as well to Tales of at tsncentral.com t-a-l-e-s-o-f at tsncentral.com that can also send you know your feedback your comments your questions your, your replays for the show and uh, we highly appreciate that also if you could go and dig us at www.digg.com Tales of Heroes is uh, on there in the podcast section we're on the second page of the games and hobbies segment 
and we'd like to make it up to the first. So, I mean, put us past uh, PC Gamer Podcast. Come on. We can beat them. They've only got 1,000 digs. we got 141 to start with this, uh, this week. Let's see if we can get up there. You can find a link directly to that at uh, tales.tsncentral.com, T-A-L-E-S-O-F.tsncentral.com. It's on the main page there under For Great Justice. See you guys later. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. The Team Sportscast Network. This broadcast is copyrighted 2006 by the Team Sportscast Network. Any copying, reproduction, redistribution, modification, rebroadcasting of any kind or any manner is expressly prohibited without the written permission of the Team Sportscast Network, LLC.